section 21.3. In this section, we're going to relate what we saw, what we learned about the electric potential with energy and conservation of energy. And we're going to have a lot of different um, multiple choice questions. And I urge you to pause the video and answer before you continue. Let us look at this case. Um, a proton is released from point Q right here in the center where the potential is zero volts. And the question is, what will it do? Is it going to stay there? Is it going to go to point R? Is it going to come to point P? And is it going to go to R at the steady speed? Or is it going to move uh, increasing speed, etc.? So I remember that um, in gravity, if you let something fall, it will fall down to places where the potential energy is less. So at this point, please pause, think, and answer. Well, the question again is, would it move by itself? And if the answer is, uh, how would it go? Then uh, the potential energy will decrease. So it would move from zero to minus 100, decreasing the potential energy. You have to think in terms of the proton being a positive charge, it would go towards uh, uh, less uh, potential energy. And uh, now, because of that, there's going to be uh, force, the change in potential energy was equal to the field times the distance. So we can get the field here from the change in potential energy, which is going to be 100 volts negative, and then divided by the distance, whatever that is, we don't really care. But uh, the field is also given by the force divided by the charge, which is mass times acceleration times u. So there is an acceleration. The bottom line is that there is an acceleration. And which means that the velocity will increase. So the answer should be C. Moves to P with an increasing speed. Uh, we have to learn a little bit more about the electric potential and potential energy. Uh, the, electric poten the electric potential energy is the actual energy. And it, the, it is the, the one measured in joules. And it is uh, where the, your work gets uh, stored and it will be released later on. The electric potential is not related to a work. It's related to uh, some charges that produce, uh, just like they produce a field, they also produce uh, a potential. The electric potential is present whether or not we have another charge there to feel it, just like the electric um, field. And um, as always, there is conservation of energy. The energy flows between the um, kinetic and potential energy. Sometimes you have kinetic energy and it will slow down if the potential energy is increasing or it can increase if the potential energy is decreasing. Just like uh, in gravity, you can something can fall starting from rest and as it comes down, it will pick up speed at the same rate that it will lose gravitational potential energy. So this uh, conservation of energy is going to be stated as by equations like this one is the final kinetic energy plus the final potential energy is going to be equal to the initial kinetic energy plus the initial uh, potential energy. And given that this uh, potential energy is is uh, can be calculated by means of the charge if there is a charge moving so it's going to be the charge times the uh, uh, difference in electric potential energy then this equation can be written like this another question a positive charge moves as shown uh, its kinetic energy increases, remains constant, decreases. We have a positive charge near the negative charge plate 
and it is moving towards the positive charge plate. So what's, what do you think is going to happen? It has some velocity, obviously not doing it by itself. It has some velocity, but what's going to happen to, to its kinetic energy as it moves? And at this point, please pause, think and answer. Well, as you can imagine, the, the positive charge cannot, doesn't want to get close to positive charges. So it will slow down as it uh, gets closer and closer. And the velocity, of course, will decrease because the, the electric field and the electric force are pushing backwards on it. So uh, the kinetic energy will decrease as the velocity decreases. Remember, the kinetic energy is one half mass V squared. So as V decreases, the kinetic energy decreases. Another question, we have a proton released from this point. What is it going to do? Is it going to go up? Is it going, going to come down? Remains at the dot, moves upward with steady speed, moves upward with increasing speed, moves downward with steady speed, moves downward with increasing speed. So please pause, think and answer. Well, of course, being a positive charge, <clears throat> it will will uh, go to lower potential, lower value, lower values of the potential, and there's going to be a, 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 an electric field pointing down, and that introduces a force, which means that um, as the potential decreases, the kinetic energy increases, so it will be moving down with an increasing speed. Another question, if a positive charge is released from rest, it moves in the direction of a stronger electric field, a weaker electric field, higher electric potential, lower electric potential, both B and D. Pulse, think and answer. As we have seen before, it moves always to lower uh, places of lower electric potential. And we're talking about a positive charge. Another question. A positive charge goes from a, a point with B equals 500 volts, this point here, to another point where B equals 400 volts. Will its speed up or slow down and there are three answers speed up slow down stay the same well pause think and answer well the question to answer is uh, will it go by itself well it is going from high potential to low potential yes it would go by itself it's a positive charge it would go to lower uh, potential potentials and uh, if so by doing by reducing the potential energy it will increase its kinetic energy it's just like falling down you pick up speed as you fall down so um, the answer is uh, will speed up but now uh, the positive charge goes from 400 volts from this point where the voltage is 400 to this point where the voltage is 500. Again, will it speed up or slow down as it goes from here to there? Pause, think and answer. Well, again, the same question to answer is, would it go by itself? And the answer is no. This guy doesn't want to go up by itself. It has to be pushed up. So because of that, it will increase its potential and correspondingly, it will decrease its kinetic energy. And decreasing its kinetic energy means slowing down.
This is a numerical problem. We have a proton that is moving it through an electric potential that is somehow created by a bunch of charges. And uh, at some point, it, its uh, speed is uh, this number here, 2.5 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. And at that point, the potential is 1500 volts. What will be the proton speed later when it reaches um, a potential of minus 500 volts? Well, the way to answer this is by conservation of energy. We have the final energy equals the, the initial energy. And what we want is um, the final speed. And so this is what we want. And this is one half MB, MB uh, final squared. So out of this, we have to solve for the velocity. But um, we have information about the rest. We have uh, the final uh, potential, the initial potential, and we know the masses and the initial velocity. So it's just a matter of solving for this, leaving it on the left-hand side of the equation, and then uh, solving for BF squared by dividing by m over 2, we get this. And then um, you plug in the numbers, and then you take the square root. The initial potential is going to be uh, 1500. The final potential is going to be minus 500. So minus, minus gives you plus. And since uh, it is going from high potential to low potential, decreasing the potential, the kinetic energy ought to increase. Consequently, the velocity has to be larger. And we can see that in this case, the final velocity is 6.7 when it uh, and initially it was 2.5 so indeed it grew larger there is another way in uh, of measuring um, energy and this is this another unit is known as the electron volt it's a convenient unit because um, when you deal with uh, particles like in accelerators uh, the numbers get extremely large. So by using electron volts, you can bring them down to um, normal numbers, those that you can count with your hand. And um, the definition of an electron volt is the energy that an electron has when it moves through a difference of one electron volt. In other words, you have an electron at rest, and then you let it go, move, from there to uh, uh, from that point to another point where the difference in electric potential is one volt and um, you calculate the, the energy through that. So your delta V is one volt, the kinetic energy in this case is going to be the charge times uh, the delta V. So the charge of an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs and this is going to be just simply one volt you multiply. So it, it is equal to that. So one, this is known as an electron volt. One electron volt is going to be equal to that amount. And from now on, instead of using this big number, or I mean this very small number, uh, we simply use uh, one EV. And uh, the abbreviations that we are commonly use are kilo electron volts, mega electron volts, and GEVs, which is uh, thousands of millions of electron volts. These uh, units, for instance, are used in, um, in these uh, machines that are used in the medical field uh, for uh, treating uh, cancer. And uh, in this case, there is an accelerator and that goes, uh, the charges go through a difference of 20 MEVs. So they would give energies of 20 MEVs. Well, a question related to that, please read it, pause, think, and answer. Well, one electron volt is the kinetic energy gained by an electron as it accelerates through a potential difference in one volt, so it is energy. Another numerical problem. Um, 
Atomic particles are characterized by the kinetic energy in MeVs. What is the speed of an 8.7 MeV proton? Well, what we have to do is to translate that into joules and then from there get uh, the answer in meters per second. So we go from electron volts to joules by multiplying by this factor. So we end up with joules and we uh, we know that this is the kinetic energy, so the kinetic energy is one half mv squared. If we solve for v, so it's going to be twice the kinetic energy divided by the mass, like this, and then we take the square root. You plug in the kinetic energy here, the mass of uh, the proton, and you get 41 million meters per second. Another problem, a proton has a speed of 3.5 times 10 to the fifth meters per second at a point where the potential is 100 volts. Later, it is at a point where the potential is minus 150 volts. What is the, uh, its speed uh, at this later point? Well, conservation of energy, we know the initial and the final potential, we know the initial velocity, and we know the mass because it's a proton. So it's just a matter of solving for the final velocity from uh, the kinetic energy, the final kinetic energy. So we start with conservation of energy. The initial energy equals the final energy. The initial energy is the kinetic energy plus potential energy. And the final energy is kinetic energy plus potential energy. And out of this, what we want is the final velocity. So we solve for this by bringing this energy to the left hand side and then dividing everything by m over 2 and then taking the square root plugging in the numbers and you get the answer it's not given the answer but you can calculate it another question question number five if an electron moves along the trajectory from I, point I to point F, what happens to the electric potential energy? Does it increase, decrease, or stay the same as it goes from here to there, following this trajectory? Look at the fact that this is negative. So think, pause, think, and answer. Well, in this case, is, um, the way I think of these type of problems, I always replace the negative charge by the positive charge. And I see that this is very close. This is farther away. Independent of the path, it's going to go from being close to being away. So it would do that by itself. It wants to get away from a positive. A positive charge wants to get away from positive charges. So from that point of view, um, the energy would decrease, but being a negative, it flips everything. So instead of decreasing, it will increase. So again, the question is, will uh, the charge go from I to F by itself? No, because he wants to go get closer, not farther away. So uh, the potential energy will increase. A related question. B is the electron speed greater than, less than, or equal to its speed uh, 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 at F compared to I. Is the electron speed at F greater than, less than, or equal to the speed at I? Well, pause, think, and answer. Well, we had the answer before because uh, it's moving away. We know that uh, its uh, potential energy was uh, decreasing, which means that the kinetic energy is uh, increasing, uh, decreasing. Consequently, it's uh, getting uh, smaller. By conservation of energy, the as the potential energy increases, as we found in part A, its kinetic energy and the velocity will decrease. Another question. 
we have um, two protons, one after the other one, are launched from uh, point one with the same speed. They follow the trajectory shown. So in other words, in one case, it is shut this way, it goes from one to two. And in another case, it is shut to the right and it goes from one to three following this path. And uh, the proton speed at point two and point three are related by is the velocity at two larger than the velocity at three? Is the velocity at two equal to the velocity at three? Is the velocity at two less than the velocity at three? Or we don't have enough information to compare the speeds. So pause, think and answer. Well, by energy, by conservation of energy, we we know that this point and this point are at the same quote unquote height away from uh, the positive plate. So they have the same potential. And a proton here would have the same uh, uh, potential energy, electric potential energy than a proton here. Which means that um, the kinetic energy they pick up is gonna be the, exactly the same and the velocity is going to be the same by conservation of energy. Well, we let us look at some um, interesting devices, um, very common to you. Electric energy can be transformed into other types of energy, like kinetic energy, like heat, like in this case, we're setting up um, uh, charges in motion. When they go through the light bulb, they produce heat and light so that electric energy gets transformed into other types of energy. Um, also, as charges move from the high to low potential terminals of an elevator motor, the electric potential is transformed into gravitational potential energy. In this case, uh, a motor is moving masses up and down, and so we're transforming electric energy into gravitational potential energy. What is power? Well, power is the ability of producing energy. So it is uh, energy per unit time. I always uh, use the, the example pointing at the strongest student in my classroom. I say, well, we have the, we can do the same amount of work, but you're going to do it faster because you're younger. But so consequently, your energy, which is going to be the same amount of work that, that I do, is going to be divided by a smaller time. So you have more power than I do. And uh, in this case, uh, electric energy is going to be given by the charge times the difference in electric potential. So we have this way of calculating power in the case of electric cases. So we have the charge divided by the time, um, time taken and then the, the difference in electric potential. Like for instance, in this case, we have um, a charge, which is 3.2 nanocoulombs, going from po uh, this point where the voltage is 500 volts. It is going to this, where the voltage is 400 volts, and it is taking 12 milliseconds. The question is how much power is dissipated as, um, as this uh, happens? Well, the question here, is, it says how much power is dissipated in pushing the charge. First of all, it, you don't have to push it because it would go by itself. But anyway, whoever is doing it, which in this case is the, uh, the system, you know, the, the electric field, then uh, that's uh, dissipating the energy. And we use this. It's going to be the amount of charge, the 3.2 nanocoulombs, the time divided by the time, 12 milliseconds and then the change in electric potential, which is gonna be 100, from 400 to 500 to 400 is 100 volts. So that's, that would, would give you the answer. And the answer is gonna be in the uh, micro watts. The units of uh, power are joules per second, and that's uh, a watt, W-A-T-T. -T. 
And this is it for section 21.3. This is uh, the homework. One conceptual question, 20. And problems 6 and 9. And that's it.